to introduce our second speaker today. Our speaker is Ken. It's project number 48, and the speak title is Spring Conference Presentation. Ken Smith will be presenting a 10 to 12 minute portion of the 45 minute presentation. Well, 10 to 12, it's close up. Of the 45 minute presentation, he's scheduled to give to the club vice president of education at the District 57 conference on May 12th this year. His speech at the conference will be entitled Herding Cats Through the CL Manual. During our club's 2010-2011 year, Ken was the VP of Education, wherein he developed and implemented a plan to help club members navigate through and complete this competence leadership manual in the shortest practical time. Ken has since learned that this has been a challenge for clubs all over the world. This is why he has been asked to present a plan and form he created to the other VPS in District 57. I think it's very fitting that you're doing this presentation for everyone. You've done a great job with all of us in the group, so I'm glad you're doing this. Please help me welcome Ken Smith with his spring conference presentation. Spring conference presentation, Ken Smith. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hope I earn that applause. <laughs> As the introduction said, I spent some time prior to taking on the role of Vice President of Education, going through the manual, I, analyzing it, trying to figure out what the roadblocks were. I'd already done it myself several times, and I made mistakes. And I noticed as we were interviewing the members, Arlen and I were interviewing members for that coming year, that they had made many of the same mistakes I had in completing the, the manual or working on the manual. Toastmasters is both a communication and leadership program, not or leadership, not communication and if you'd like to leadership, although that does turn out to be the way some people treat it, and that's fine. But for those who want to learn the leadership part as well, I applaud you, and I, I worked toward helping them get there because the Competent Communication Manual and all the advanced manuals help you learn and practice communication skills. But where are you going to apply those skills? Leadership is the practical application of those communication skills. The leadership manual teaches you a number of leadership skills, 10 of them, and gives you a chance in most cases to practice those skills within the club environment, just doing the roles that people were normally doing anyway. But it also then gives them the, the opportunity to put their communication skills into effect that they've been learning through the communication side. Why communicate? If it's not to lead people somewhere, you want to lead them into accepting your point of view, maybe, or to laugh if it's a humorous speech, but you want a result, a specific result, in most cases, from any communication you engage in. The Competent Communication Manual teaches you the 10 basic leadership skills of listening, critical thinking, giving feedback, time management, planning and implementation, organization and delegation, facilitation, motivation, mentoring, and team building. And it helps you use the roles that you are already performing in the club to, to focus on those particular skills each time. The problem is there are many roles, opportunities listed in the manual, but not all of them are required in order to complete the manual. So what is the shortest way to get to learning the, or, or completing the manual? That, that was what I was focused on. I came up with a couple of strategies. I'll show you strategy one. You can maybe see if that's in focus enough, that some of the roles are crossed off. And there was a reason for this. As I went to and analyzed the, the different roles, 
I realized there were five different projects that included being a Toastmaster as one of the roles. There were six that included being a general evaluator as one of the roles, four of being grammarian and so on. But each of those things only come up, rotate in, in most clubs, once every, say, 20 weeks, if you have 20 members in your club, because they're rotated. So it's going to take a long time if you're focused on those. However, there are four opportunities to do a speech evaluation and two opportunities to do speeches. So as I went through and analyzed it, I realized that I should keep all the speeches and evaluations in there as ones that you can practice leadership skills with and eliminate as many of the Toastmaster, General Evaluator, etc. roles as I could and still meet all of the minimum requirements. You see the second col or third column there is role required, roles required. That tells how many of the roles are actually required in order to complete that particular project. I duplicated that over in the column to the right of the date completed, and there I could just reduce that number as people completed their particular roles. Now, how do I know when people are, or which roles people want to have, and which roles they don't go back? Time management, for example, number four, has a slight variation on the requirements. That is, you must be a timekeeper in order to complete that, and one of the other four roles. Well, this is an area that I messed up in by just saying, okay, well, if here's my role, and here's the next project that has it in, and I do it, and I found that I was doing more roles in that project than were required, and that took it away from having a different project fulfilled by have, doing that role there. So a plan seemed necessary to me, and this is what I developed. Another role, two others that have similar type of requirements. Number eight, you must complete a public relations or membership campaign in order to complete role eight, plus two others in that project. So that, I realized, was going to be our big aim. And my goal was then to get everyone through all the rest of it as quickly as I could, so that the only thing left to complete their CL was to do a membership or PR campaign. Number 10 had a choice of doing a club project or being Toastmaster and General Evaluator one more time. And of course, again, that takes 20 weeks for each one to rotate in if you have 20 members in the club. So that was going to take time. So I crossed those off, as well as the PR and membership campaign, because we're already going to have to do that in number eight. And I left just projects. Now, we have, for example, two contests a year. That's a, those are projects members can share in our particular club. We also have the Oh, an open house, we have a birthday party or anniversary party, we have an awards dinner, most years, and you can come up with your own as well. So just chairing a club event is one that should be fairly easy, but for those who don't have the time and so forth to do it, they can switch back and do the Toastmaster and General Evaluator one more time and that will just add a little bit of time to get the project done. I develop a grid so that I can quickly see which members need what left. <laughs> <laughs> if you look across the top, I'll highlight it up here, you can see that projects 1 through 5, 7, 8, and 10 all have roles that can be done in the club. So I separated those as part of my analysis of who should get what roles, in addition to who has done that role too recently to do it again. So there were two things I was balancing. And as we completed roles, I would gray it out. So Arlena, in this example on the top here, has completed two CLs since we began. 
that's kind of tracking. And then she's working on several other CL manuals as well. And it shows what she has left to do with each of those. Same with everyone down, down the line. There are also a line right below that, possibles, and that's just to remind me that there are other possible roles or projects that those roles can fit into. And again, you see first item, TM, Toastmaster, there are five possible projects that you could do Toastmaster role in, two for speaker, three for table topic, uh, map, topic master, six for GP, et cetera. So that was to help me see if someone needed a role or was going to do a role because of no, no other possibilities, where else could that fit in? On the bottom of the sheet, I have two strategies, and there's only a slight difference between the two. The first one is the one I use the most often, often and that's where people are going to do a club event in as Project 10. The second one just took those out and moved them over. So if they don't have the time or too busy in the regular schedule to chair a club event, they can just do the Toastmaster and General Evaluator one more time. And so the numbers show which project is left for those to be done. Going back to this one, you can see, for example, in Arlinda number six, she, she just has to be trying to guess PG in project number seven still to do. Now some clubs, that's awkward to be like ours because it's hard to get people down here at Odark Hundred <laughs> just to be friended by our Monday. <laughs> so I know that Topic Master, Toastmaster, and General Evaluator all are in Project 7 as well, and I may switch that out for her. Or if that isn't doesn't come up because she's done that too frequently uh, too quickly, then I will go to one of the other projects that she still needs to complete and pick one of those. Or even ask her if necessary to if she wants to start another manual or just skip getting roll credit at this point. No. No? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry? Can you be friends again if you brought the guest? Yes, yes. Now the the requirement in the manual isn't just to be a friend, but you you yeah. have to friend them to the point where they have joined the club. But yes, once you, if you've done that you get credit and only one person gets credit for that. So everyone's gonna shake their hand, but the one who hangs on to them and, and convinces <laughs> them to sign the application, pay the money to the one who will get the credit for it. Doesn't say that. <laughs> I wasn't going to be sure. Number nine is another area that we have people getting hung up, and that is to mentor a new member, mentor an experienced member, or be a high performance leadership guide. You have to do one of those three to complete project number nine. We do have a mentor chair. I take that back. We had a mentor chair. Her lead is no longer attending. So we should have a mentor chair again in this class. Everyone should be assigned a mentor the day they join. And they can change that person if, if there's not a good match. But we really need someone to communicate with that person in advance of every meeting, especially for roles they have not yet done, and help them understand how that role is to be done in the club so that they don't feel uncomfortable, they don't feel unprepared. And that includes, of course, their speeches over with them what's required of the icebreaker and then the organizing your speech and, and on down the line. Everyone should have a mentor, including experienced members. And that's all that's required in order to get credit for project number nine. 
if, as you can see there, project number eight all the way down the line is left there because that's the one where you have to chair a PR or membership campaign in order to complete that, in, in addition to two other regular roles. What this club has been doing is dividing the year into four quarters. We've got July through September, October through December, January through March, and April through June. And we can have two chairs during each of those quarters, one for membership, one for public relations. <coughs> public relations job is to get people to come into the meeting, to, to work with the cold market out there, people we don't know, and attract them. That can be through ads, flyers, whatever. And then membership takes over once they're in the meeting and encourages them to join along with their person who befriended them mm -hmm. and get the application, turn that over to the treasurer. And then from that point forward, public membership should, the membership vice president should work with keeping, retaining them. So a membership chair can take a specific role under the membership vice president. For example, run a program, a, a membership campaign of retention as opposed to a membership contest, for example. And that could be to interview people, make sure they're getting what they need out of it, possibly even do a, an exit polling on those who have left, find out why they left, see what we're missing here. So there are opportunities, even though there's a public relations vice president and a membership vice president, there are opportunities to assist them by being a public relations chair or a membership chair, campaign chair. And those are needed and you can't complete the CL manual, the Company Leadership Manual, without doing this. Again, here is the tracking I actually did for our Linda's project number six. Uh, CL manual number six. You can see that once the roles are completed, leaving out the ones that have a, a line through them, I put the dates there so that I knew when someone needed to do something else to complete their manual. I actually wanted to know when they were at the point where project six, eight, or ten were left, or nine or ten were left, so that I could encourage them and coach them on what to do. The mentoring, <coughs> as highlighted there, that map was not. Excuse me. In this particular case, <coughs> Arlinda did complete both, <coughs> both the extra Toastmaster and general evaluator to complete project number 10. Oops. By the way, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You can ask good questions and you can ask great questions. The difference is, if I know the answer, it's a great question. <laughs> well, all questions are good, even if I don't know the answer. Whoops. Where'd I go? I missed a few. Okay. I'll have to correct that. Let's go. Okay, that, that, that'll be it there. <laughs> That's that question. The actual speech will be 45 minutes. Yes. Uh, the club doesn't really provide that much time for me, so I've only done a portion of it. No, just not.